Hey what's going on guys, in today's video we'll be going over evolution and how it pertains to Monster Crown. Now it's definitely an interesting topic given the fact that Monster Crown's quote unquote evolution mechanic is very unique from other monster taming games and a lot of information is still up in the air as these systems aren't in the current early access build but are coming. So with all that being said this video aims to dissect what we do know about the evolution system as of this point. So yeah sit back relax and let's dive right in. Okay, so Monster Crown's got a few different ways in which your monsters can transform, and each are rather unique. Now, I don't think every type of transformation has been revealed as of just yet, but I'm going to focus on the ones that seem to power up your monsters rather than devolve them. What I mean by this is that we have one type of transformation that's currently available in Monster Crown, and that's defungal transformation that works on Laz via the Apo's light item. What this item does is it transforms Laz back into its original form being a Po. The reason for this is that Laz is just the end result of an Apo getting infected and this item has some sort of reversion effect on that virus. Now that being said I don't know if I'd consider that evolution per se just because it's almost like de-evolution and that Apo is probably weaker than Laz realistically. Not really being a combat monster. Now that being said Monster Crown's evolution system with its other items that we have more information on is more akin to Mega Evolution from Pokemon, but with a twist. Within this video, I'd like to talk about three specific transformation methods, which I think we have the most information on, but these aren't the only three, just the ones I find the most notable in relation to evolution. These three being Synergy Transformations, the Atomic Clock Transformations, and Super Grow. So for starters, the bulk of what we know regarding synergy transformations comes from this short trailer that the Monster Crown YouTube channel uploaded a while back. It showcases a monster using some sort of crown item in battle to transform into various crossbreed forms. We see in the trailer that the same crown could have different effects on a singular monster, so my assumption is that every monster will have five potential synergy form transformations based on their five potential crossbreed forms. Now I hardly think it's a coincidence that the transformations are named the same thing as a system in place in the game. Synergy are these bars that are located on either side of the screen that can be stacked up to four times. Now I'm wondering if synergy transformations, or as they're called in the trailer, perfect synergy, is connected to this. Perhaps a fifth stack will be added, or after hitting four, you can transform at the cost of a turn or something like that. I do want to do a video going over the synergy system at some point, because it's actually quite interesting, but for this video, just know that Jason's vision of the synergy system, as outlined in previous interviews, is a high-risk, high-reward style of play. To gain stacks, you either have to switch or brace for a turn, and in both cases are giving up a potential attacking turn. More stacks can provide more damage as well as other effects. I think throwing in a potential evolution based around this mechanic would further incentivize the use of synergy. Now, the atomic clock, in my opinion, is the most interesting one from a lore perspective as it ages your monster for either a short period of time, aka during the battle, or permanently outside of the battle. The catch with the permanent transformation is that the monster in question will absorb the clock if used, and subsequently the clock's already a very rare item, so you can use it in battle and keep the clock forever like a megastone, or permanently evolve it like let's say a firestone. We've already seen a few atomic clock monsters, and I've got to say the lore behind them is quite interesting. Now, I'm not going to go super in-depth as we have covered these themes in our Monster Crown Starters video, but both Dracoil and Darwool have atomic clock transformation. Darwal's base monster entry states that it's waiting to reclaim the land that once belonged to him, and its atomic clock entry references the fact that it did achieve this goal. Dracoil's atomic clock form references imitators trying to say that they have an aged Dracoil, and funny enough, there is an NPC with a Gradeg that pretends to have an atomic Dracoil. We also get to see an atomic gore gem in the early access trailer if you play close attention. This transformation, as well as the next transformation we're going to be talking about, were stated by Jason, the lead developer to be the only ones with shared genetic variations and will likely be dependent on the monster's body type in relation to crossbreed. Okay, so the third type of evolution I'd like to talk about is Super Grow, which we do get a glimpse of in the current Early Access build. The Apo atop Apo's Plateau is a Super Grow Apo, and I'm assuming it's quite powerful. Now, the only piece of information I could really find about Super Grow to note that it's a very powerful transformation. However, I'm not exactly sure how it'll be achieved or whether or not it's permanent. I'm personally leaning towards some sense of permanence as we do see a wild Super Grow Apo, like I mentioned earlier, and that Super Grow has been compared to plants on steroids. You don't really see plants reverting. This plants on steroids analogy is obviously comedic, but 
it may hold some water. Now, I'm not exactly sure how that pertains to a post specifically, but when we look at Jungro's SG or Jungro's Supergrow form, we see that the plants have really taken a new form and a po is considered to be a grazing creature. So perhaps there's more plant-like elements than meet the eye. Now, like I stated previously, there are other means of transformation within the game. And honestly, when we get the full details of each, I'll likely make a more in-depth video of perhaps even every single method with its own video to go alongside it. Obviously, provided the information we get is adequate from both a gameplay and lore perspective. The other methods include Burning Sky, which I assume pertains to some sort of uh, fire-themed monsters, Book of the Dead, which apparently can transform both K Knight and Hoo and something called FB, which pertains to a feel. There's also got to be some sort of mystery transformation that'll pertain to Ambigu. This is basically so that all the starters end up getting transformations, not making one less powerful than the others. All in all, I do think that Monster Crown sets itself apart by having all of these unique methods of evolution as well as interesting mechanics for enabling them. Whether it be aging your monster by 100 years or getting the edge in battle by activating perfect synergy, I think that Monster Crown has a bright future and these mechanics will help forge the path ahead. Let me know what you guys think about Monster Crown's evolution system, both in comparison to other Tamer games and as a standalone topic. And of course, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe for more monster taming content. Follow me on Twitter, check out my Discord and Patreon, all links in the description. Until next time, peace.